Hey, I'm Jeff, the director at Aimright Ministries. We serve the youth and families of the Garfield neighborhood in downtown Phoenix, and we've been here for over 30 years. Aimright has been rooted in the Garfield community, and we've always been a place where youth can find direction in life. And the last few years, the kids that we're working with, they've experienced loss of community, they've lost loved ones, they've become more isolated, and they're dealing with depression and anxiety and just a sense of overwhelming loneliness. And that's on top of all of the everyday challenges that these kids already face living in an undersourced neighborhood. But we believe that God is in the business of fixing things and we want to be part of it. Aimright operates as a nonprofit organization with a real, consistent, physical presence in the Garfield neighborhood. With all of the unique challenges that our kids are facing, our year-long programming allows them a place to get connected again and build trust-based relationships. I lead a team of staff and interns who all share the same passion for loving this community. We believe that God truly has called us to engage, equip, and empower the youth of this neighborhood. We have so much going on at Aimright and we would love for you to be part of it. We have full-time internships available. We're always looking for financial partners. Check out our website and learn how you can get connected. Good morning, uh, Light in the Valley. I, uh, it is such an honor and a privilege to be with you this morning. And it's uh, so great to see some familiar faces. Our, your youth group was, well, they were incredible. They served us so well uh, this last summer, and we just had a great time with them. And uh, Light in the Valley, you have been an incredible support to Aimright consistently year after year you've sent youth groups you've sent uh, work groups you've sent us interns we've uh, we have Ruby Yoder with us and uh, we love having Ruby she's been such a blessing um, Carson has served with us as well and uh, we're, we're just so grateful for that connection that we have with you I believe that um, that God is doing great things at Aimright and he's also doing great things here at Light in the Valley and for us to be able to work together in the kingdom to, is, is just a, a beautiful thing. Um, I was going to make a joke earlier. The, um, our staff is telling me not to, to say these jokes, but they're not here, so I can just roll with it. Um, they're heavily rolling their eyes and shaking their heads back in Phoenix. But I was going to say something about, like, wow, there sure is a lot of people here. We should take up an offering but you already did that, so I can't say it anymore. Um, it, tr it truly is great to be here. My, uh, my family uh, is wonderful. I love them so much. My wife, Trisha, is a middle school teacher right across the street at uh, Garfield Elementary. It's a K through eighth grade school. She teaches middle school English, so we'll have a, a prayer for her afterwards. Um, her having to deal with those middle schoolers, but she's doing an incredible job there. And then um, the Chuplets, Della is is uh, eight years old. She's in third grade. Max on the right, he is um, he's turning six here in a in a in just a few days. And Roslyn is four. And we've been uh, living there at Aimright for the last few months, and we we just we're so blessed to to be part of the ministry. And you know. Whenever, whenever you make a change or a shift or you take your family to a new place, there's a, there's a lot of adjustments that happen. And I, I went from being uh, a nurse in long-term care in behavioral health for over, over a decade to working at, at Aimright. And now we'd had connections before and, and had served with them and Caleb and Steph are dear friends of ours. Um, but whenever you take your family and move them into a, a new community, into a new neighborhood, and you're on mission, 
and you are experiencing a different culture, you have to make adjustments. And you have to, there, there are things that I've been sort of struggling with, I guess, as, as we kind of integrate, integrate ourselves into the culture. And, you know, you have to get used to the way people do things. Um, I'm, I'm from, grew up in Goshen, Indiana. I was born in Phoenix. We lived out here in Holmes County for, for a bit. Um, but, you know, Goshen is, is what I know. And, and so being in Phoenix, and I've had to learn how to operate in an urban setting. And, you know, one of the things that I'm having trouble with is, is learning the language. Um, and I just, I, maybe you guys can help me out with this, but there are just some words that I don't quite understand and I need help with. Um, but I'm trying, I really am. And one of those words, it, I think you guys might be able to help me with this, and I think you have actually when you're out here, but one of those words is busing. I th- am I saying that correctly? Read, am I saying it right? Busing? Yeah. <laughs> this Gen Z lingo has got me all out of sorts. It's, I, I feel like I have to learn a new language every few years. Apparently, and I think you guys told me this, you can't say lit anymore. That's not, that's not in, is it? Yes? No? You have no help this morning. Thank you. Uh, we love working with the youth, and we love working with, with our, our Gen Z staff. Um, there's never a dull moment there. One, one thing that I love about Aimright is that any, any amount of time that you spend with Aimright, whether you're a, a part of a youth group that comes out for a week, or you're an intern, you're a staff member, you're a board member, um, you're one of our students that joins our programs, is once you're in, you're family. And that never changes. And you become part of that family. And I, lo- I love that about, about Aimright, um, because it gives you a certain comfort um, knowing that wherever you go, whether it's South Carolina or Virginia or Indiana or here in Holmes County, you're going to have people that are, that are on your side, that are rooting for you. And it's um, so great to see uh, so many of our, our interns, summer interns, past interns. Um, it, it really is, is a blessing. Um, and, it, and I wanted to, to also say that being able to stand on this stage in front of you is, is truly an honor because I, I recognize the legacy of Light in the Valley and the, um, the people that have, have preached on this stage. Um, my great aunt and uncle, Furman and Esther Yoder, uh, Furman has preached many sermons, I'm sure, from where I'm standing. My grandpa, Menno Yoder, has preached on this stage, and I believe my dad, Wayne Chupp, had preached um, a sermon on this stage as well. So to be able to follow in those footsteps is a little humbling. It's a lot humbling, actually. Um, so I'm, I'm so glad to be with you, and I believe that God has something for you this morning. I believe that he has a word that he would like me to share. And so before I um, get, go any further, I'd like to just pray. Father, we give you this morning... Um, I pray, Lord, that uh, your spirit would be uh, afresh in us and that we'd be sensitive to the way that it's moving. And I pray, God, that uh, you would give me the words to speak this morning. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. I've entitled my sermon, The Slow Gospel, A Sacred Trust. In, in today's culture, things happen very, very quickly. Just if, was it last week or the week before? I can't keep my dates straight, but we, we found out that the, the Queen of England passed away. And that happened, you know, it seemed like from the time that, that she, she passed, the time everybody knew about it was about four minutes flat. And things happen so quickly in our recreation, our education, our churches. Things are just moving. And it can get a little overwhelming sometimes. Um, and it seems too like it, there's a new iPhone almost every month or so. I got it, the iPhone, like a 13 mini, I think. I'm not even sure. But now I hear that's not even the best one out there. It's irrelevant. I, sh- I need to get the, like, the 14 Pro Max premium upgrade or something. Uh, but things in our world move very, very, very quickly. And, and sometimes in our church life, in our spiritual life, things happen suddenly as well. Maybe we hear a, a word from God or somebody speaks a word over us or we feel like God is calling us 
into something or to do something, and it seems like it's happening suddenly. My, the thing that I'd love to talk about this morning, and I, wanna, I want us to explore a bit, is, is we serve a God whose kingdom we live in. We live in, in the kingdom that, that where Christ is king, and in that kingdom, it is a slow kingdom coming. God has been deliberately and, and all-knowingly and powerfully moving and working in people's lives and in, and, in our, and in the church for a very long time. He is not a God that, he has not gotten the memo that things should happen like that. He is moving deliberately and works deliberately in us, and it is a slow kingdom coming. We live in this age or this an era where God has sent his son. He has declared that earth is his kingdom and that he is ruling over it. And Jesus was, was that sort of flag you know, on the beach saying, this is mine. This is mine and Jesus is king. And he is bringing in a new kingdom here on earth. But at the same time, we know that, that that kingdom isn't fully fulfilled. We're living in a time where there's still brokenness and hurt and death and grief and things are just not right. So we're waiting for that, for that kingdom to be fully realized here on earth. And so the kingdom has already come, but it is not yet fulfilled. So we live in a time of the already, but not yet. It is a slow kingdom coming. However, there are those suddenlies that happen along the way where God has been working and moving and suddenly something happens. One of my favorite examples of this is in scripture in Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 17. I'm just going to read this real quick. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night, and suddenly... An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly... There was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. And when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them, concerning this child. This is an example of a suddenly that happened in Israel. Israel had been waiting and yearning and hoping for someone to free them from this oppression they were under. They were living under Roman rule. They were being taxed heavily. Life was not good for the people of Israel. But yet they clung to this hope that somebody was going to come to deliver them and to to release them from this bondage. And they believed that a Messiah was coming. And on that night, in that field, those shepherds got to be part of a suddenly that happened. God had been silent for years, for generations. There were no prophets. There was not a word from God saying, hang in there, guys, you got this. But finally, finally, it happened. And it happened suddenly. But it was not just a a little blip. It wasn't something random. It was something that God had been bringing about for for all of of eternity to this point. We live and move and breathe in a slow kingdom coming. And you see that that the, uh, the shepherds, they were on board with this suddenly. They were ready to go. They they made haste. If we could bring up that last slide. And I feel like if, if it would have happened now and it would have been a, a bunch of kids that were out there, because that's probably the age group, I don't think they would have said anything like, come, let us go, make haste and go. They would have said about two things. They would have said, bruh, let's go. I think that's what they would have said. 
but they got on board. They knew, they knew that this suddenly was really, really important, that this was a big deal. We can go through periods in our life where it seems like God has been silent for a long time. We can get a calling, we can get a, a vision of what God wants us to do, we can get really excited and say, I'm ready, I've got my word, let's go, I'm called, and you know, unleash me on the world, God, I'm ready to do this thing. But it's a slow kingdom coming, and sometimes it's not God's timing. God is always on time, he is never late, and he will never be late with you. As, as you, as Light in the Valley, you're, it's, it seems like you're entering into a new season where there might be some changes that are happening. And last week, Jimmy had a sermon on prayer, and I think it was just an incredible thing. Towards the end of the sermon, he said something about how we pray for God's will to be done, not ours. For it is him, it is him that we rely on. We want to be part of what God is doing. And it can get really frustrating sometimes because we just want something to happen. Like, come on, let's do this. Like, I'm tired of just doing the same old thing and I feel like what we're doing is not working. I need a suddenly in my life to move us forward. But God is faithful. And in ministry, especially, you can feel this because there are, there are kids that we work with where you need a suddenly and you need it quick. And that suddenly doesn't always happen. And it can get frustrating and it can get discouraging. Um, there's a, a, a couple guys that my wife has taught. She taught them last year and they graduated and, and moved on to, to high school. They're freshmen. And one of them, I got a call and, uh, from, from the school and they said, it was, it was my wife, and she said, Jeff, can you, can you go, go down to the corner on 7th Street McDowell and so-and-so is, is there begging for food. And I don't really know this kid, so I'm going to go try to find him and give him my number and say, hey, come, come out to Aimright and hang out with us. But I don't know, um, I don't know him. I, I couldn't find him. But this kid needed a suddenly. He was homeless. He was um, on drugs. He, he needed a suddenly in his life. Another, another example of, of kids needing a suddenly is uh, we were working with a kid last year and he came almost every single day. And I would sit and talk with him outside and he would tell me about his, his family and you could tell that, that he was using something. And um, he was abusing substances, he was into drugs and I, we would just work with him and talk with him every single day and encourage him. And uh, last week, we heard from some of his friends that he was in the hospital and that he had overdosed on drugs and they weren't sure if he was going to make it. Our friend needed a suddenly in his life. And sometimes, when you're working with people, people are, are hard. We're not so much fun to work with sometimes. But... God truly is in the business of fixing things and, he, and it's all about being faithful and about staying faithful to the calling and trusting him. Sometimes things can seem really hopeless. Um, and, and I know that with Caleb and Steph serving for all those years, over, you know, well over a decade with Aimright, I've heard stories and seen them walk through life with kids who needed a suddenly and that suddenly never came. And I've also seen them walk through life with kids who suddenly did come. And that after years and years of working with them, they have families, they're working, they're worship leaders, they're pastors, they're uh, pharmacy techs, they're, they're living life that God ha would want for them. And they suddenly came because of the work, the slow kingdom coming work that, that happened. And Light in the Valley, you're no different. This slow kingdom coming work that you're doing is, is going to help you when your suddenly comes when the new season starts, when there's transitions and changes, that suddenly is not happening on its own. It's something that is, God is leading up to. There's formation that is happening in that, and, and I want to affirm you in that. Um, you're having a prayer vigil in a couple weeks, or, and what, what better way to say, God, what are you doing? We want to be part of that than, than coming before him in his presence. I love it. 
our culture is an, is an instantaneous culture. And uh, Phil Strout said this, and I think other people have said this too, but Phil Strout was the, the national director for the Vineyard Movement um, a few years ago. And I got to hear him preach one Sunday morning, and he said this. He said that we live in a microwave culture, but we belong to a crockpot kingdom. Isn't that the truth? That's so good. We live in a microwave culture where things gotta be instant. Boom, boom, boom. I need this, I need a new phone, I need this to happen, I need that job right now, I need the truck, I need, I need my life to be fixed, I want it all just now, boom, so I can do what God has called me to do. But no, 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 it is low and slow, baby. It is low and slow. We belong to a crock pot kingdom where things simmer and where things are, they take a while sometimes. Sometimes that suddenly happens a lot faster than you might think. But I'm here to tell you from experience in my own life, and I'm sure many of you could say the same thing, it's low and slow. It simmers. It waits. And God will, will take off the lid to that crock pot, and he'll put the spoon in, and he'll bring out whatever roast and carrots and potatoes are in there, and he'll look at it. And if you're in that crock pot and you're ready to go, and you're on that spoon... And you say, let's go, let's do this thing. And a lot of times God will bloop, drop you right back in, put the lid on, and let you simmer for a while. And what that does, what that does is creates a trust in us, in him. And what it does is it allows us to be built up and formed in his image and in his, what he wants for us in life. Microwave culture but a crockpot kingdom. It's a slow kingdom coming, folks. The other thing that we, we want to be aware of and that is helpful and really freeing is that, is that we are joining in the work of God. He is doing a work already. It is an ongoing thing. It is nothing that we have to conjure up or start from scratch. Now, we can do it creatively, and, and Aimright has done that with, you know, for 30 years we figured out ways to interact with kids and to share the gospel with them. Um, but it's a work that God is already doing. We are joining in what he is doing. We don't have to figure something out and start from scratch. It is, it is something that we join in, um, something that is already happening. And, and it instills a divine patience in us. It, it gives us a patience that we wouldn't normally have. And like I said before, it's a sacred trust. And it's a trust not just that God is going to do what he says he's going to do. It is a trust in who God says you are. It's so important because you are made in the image of God. You are his creation and when we decide to follow Jesus, when we decide that, yes, I'm in, let's go, let's do this thing, I want to follow Jesus, in that moment, shoo, suddenly we are filled fully with the Holy Spirit and we are 100% fully righteous in his eyes. Because when God sees us, he doesn't see our sin, he doesn't see our junk, he doesn't see all the bad stuff in our life, he sees Christ in us. And on our very absolute worst day, um, on, on the day where we screw up, on the day where we say things we shouldn't and we destroy things and we're destructive and we're hurtful, when we have, if, we have dis, if we have decided we are going to follow Jesus and we surrender to him, on our very worst day, we are still Christ in us. It is still Christ in Jeff on my days where I'm just falling apart. And that trust allows us to move and live and breathe in this world and to, to listen to the Spirit and to participate in the kingdom and what God is already doing. And we do it together. We don't do it isolated. We don't, that's why we gather every Sunday. That's why we gather throughout the week. That's why we do it together because it, we can encourage each other and we, um, we trust each other. We trust who God says you are. We look at each other and we see, we see the image of God. We see the Imago Dei. We see his image. It's a slow kingdom coming. And so as Light in the Valley, as you move forward into this new season, whatever that looks like, I, I pray that you have an insatiable desire, a desire 
for God's will to be done and to do what he wants to do here at Light in the Valley. Because he is, he is moving, you guys. He is working in your church. And I, I, I'm no, I know you know this, but he is doing some really special stuff here. You can tell. You are a, you are a body of believers that is not still. You guys are doing the work. And I, I pray for patience and for discernment for you guys um, that God's will would be done, not ours. Um, Aim, Aim right has existed for those 30 years because of the, the faithfulness of God. And I pray that as we minister to kids and then as we share the gospel with them and as we stand in the gap and as we give them a place to go, so they're not getting into trouble, and as we speak truth into their lives, that that would be the same for us, that we would be joining in what God's will is for them and not what we would like for them. I also want to encourage you this morning that if this is you, if you're waiting for your suddenly to happen, I know I waited for my suddenly, I still am for some things. I think my wife's waiting for a few of my suddenlies too. Is I want to encourage you that if, if you feel like you're called to something, that if you, you have this desire deep in your heart that something within your bones is like, this is what I got to do, I know it. I just don't know what it looks like. I, I just want to encourage you to stay the course, stay connected, stay praying, stay plugged in, keep reading the words, stay with your people. Don't go anywhere. Because God, God has big things for his people and, and he is... He is in the business of fixing things, and we get to join in that. We get to be part of it. And as always, if, if, if aim right is something that, that you're interested in, if that's maybe your suddenly or something that you feel called to do, I'd love to see if that's the right time or if it's something that uh, you'd be a good fit for. We're always looking for interns to join us in the work, um, and we'd love to have you. Thank you, Light in the Valley, for your support and giving me a chance to share this morning. Uh, it's, it's been so great to, uh, we had the golf outing yesterday and to meet so many of you and just to see how you so willingly show up and give and, um, and are with each other. Um, Jimmy, that's all I got this morning. If you wanna come on up. Um, I'd like to pray, to pray for you before we, before we end. Um, and again, if it is you, if, it's, if you're somebody that is waiting for your suddenly and you are frustrated and, man, I, I would love to pray with you and I know Jimmy would or, or anyone else in your church. I, I, know, I know how it can be. I know that it can be hard. And uh, I just want to encourage you to, to stay strong and, and that God's got you. So let me pray for us. God, thank you. Thank you for light in the valley. Thank you for your word. Thank you for scripture. Thank you that you are in control and that... Um, that you are moving in our hearts. And I, I pray, Lord, that as light in the valley moves forward and moves into a new season, you would um, stir things up in them and that they would be open to your, your spirit. We love you so much. We thank you for this opportunity to worship you and to hear your word. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen.